Hello grade eights, this is Mr. Miller and welcome to lesson 7.3 on the volume of a cylinder. So first question here, we want to determine the volume of each cylinder and in order to do that you can do the volume is the area of the base times the height and <clears throat> so this is the height and the area of the base is pi r squared so here's r so you're doing pi times 11 squared and multiplying by 26 so now um, you can use 3.14 for pi, multiply by that by 11 and square it, and then multiply by 26. Now, if you do that on a calculator, you should get 9,878. 4, 4 cubic centimeters. So again, same thing applies here. Thing to keep in mind um, for a cylinder is that when you're looking at the height, the height is not necessarily a vertical thing, but rather it's a distance between the two circular ends. So you're doing 3.14, which is approximate for pi, multiplying by r, which is 1, and squaring it, multiplying by the height, we get 25.12 cubic centimeters. So now on to number two. Thing to watch out for here is that you are given the diameter instead of the radius. So you have to divide by two to get that. And now we can do the volume formula, which is pi r squared times h and it's approximately 3.14 times 3 squared times 12 and so in that case you get 339.12 cubic centimeters so once again making sure to convert that into the radius and here's our height so volume is pi r squared h and it's 3.14 we use for pi r is 2 and h is 0 0.5 so multiplying that through you'd get 6.28 meters cubed. And the next question is working backwards. What if we're given the volume and the height, how could you find the radius? So in the volume formula where you have pi r squared times h, what you can do is in order to get r, you can take the volume and divide by pi. So volume divided by pi will give you r squared h. Divide by h as well, now you have r squared. And if you take the square root, then that should give you r. 
So here, R should be equal to the volume 502.4 divided by pi and also divided by 10. And there's what you get. So if you do that carefully, you should get four centimeters. And finally, for this one, you should get 1,230.88 divided by approximately 3.14 and 8. And then when you take the square root of all that, you should get 7 centimeters for the radius. So now just going on to the next page, we're looking to find the volume of the semicircular trough. So it's half a cylinder. So we're going to do a half times approximately 3.14 and the radius is half a meter and the height of this trough is 8. Now if you work that out you get 3.14 cubic meters. Okay, last thing says Avery thinks that if you want to double the volume of the cylinder, you must double the height of it. Monica believes that to double the volume, you should double the radius. Prove who's right. So, the <clears throat> initial volume before we make any changes is approximately pi mm -hmm. times r squared times h, which is 2813.44 cubic centimeters. And now if we consider two sides to this, So we're looking at Avery solution versus Monica's solution. So for Avery, the new volume is equal to approximately pi times r staying the same and just doubling the height. This gives us 5,626.88 cubic centimeters. And if you take the new volume, and compare that with the old volume, so the 5626.88, and dividing by the 2813.44, it's exactly 2. Whereas with Monica's solution, the new volume you'd be calculating would be approximately 3.14 times 16 squared times 14. And this would give you 
11,253.76 cubic centimeters approximately. So the new volume compared to the old volume, the initial, sorry I shouldn't have called that old here, I should have called that the initial volume. Um, and so doing 11,253.76 divided by 2813.44 you would get 4 so it's Avery who's correct So to double <clears throat> the volume, you can double the height. Okay, so that does it. That's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in class.